Throwing stones is the birthright and duty of anyone subject to foreign rule. Throwing stones is an action as well as a metaphor of resistance. Persecution of stone throwers, including eight-year-old children, is an inseparable part, though it is not always spelled out, of the job requirements of the foreign ruler, no less than shooting, torture, land theft, restrictions on movement, and the unequal distribution of water sources. The violence of 19-year-old of 19-year-old soldiers, they are 45-year-old commanders, and the violence of bureaucrats, jurists, and lawyers is dictated by reality. Their job is to protect the fruits of violence instilled in foreign occupation, resources, profits, power, and privileges. Steadfastness, sumud, and resistance against the physical and even more so the systemic institutionalized violence is the core sentence in the inner syntax of Palestinians in this land. This is reflected every day, every hour, every moment, without pause. Unfortunately, this is true not only in the West Bank, including East Jerusalem and Gaza, but also within Israel, Israel's recognized borders, although the violence and the resistance to it are expressed differently. But on both sides of the Green Line, the levels of distress, suffocation, bitterness, anxiety, and wrath are continually on the rise, as is the astonishment at Israeli's blindness in believing that their violence can remain in control forever. Often, hurling stones is born out of boredom, excessive hormones, mimicry, uh, boastfulness, and competition. But in the inner, inner syntax of the relationship between the occupier and the occupied, stone throwing is the adjective attached to the subject of, we've had enough of you, occupiers. After all, teenagers could find their ways to give vent to their hormones without risking arrests, fines, injuries, and death. Even if it is a right and duty, various forms of steadfastness and resisting, and resisting the foreign regime as well as its rules and limitations, should be taught and developed. Limitations could include the distinction between civilians and those who carry arms, between children and those in uniform, as well as the failures and narrowness of using weapons. It would make, much, it would make sense for Palestinian school to introduce basic classes in, res classes in resistance, how to build multiply tower and stockhead villages in Area C, how to behave when army troops enter your homes, comparing different struggles against colonialism in different countries, how to use a video camera to document the violence of the regime's representatives, methods to exhaust the military system and its representatives, a weekly day of work in the lands beyond the separation barrier, how to remember identifying details of soldiers who flung you handcuffed to the floor of the jeep in order to submit a complaint, the rights of detainees and how to insist on them in real time, how to overcome fear of interrogators, and mass efforts to realize the right of, to realize or to materialize the right of movement. Come to think of it, Palestinian adults could also make use of these lessons, perhaps in place of their drills, training in dispersing protests, and practice in spying on Facebook posts. When high school students were drafted two years ago, for the campaign of boycotting settlement product, products, it seemed like a move in the right direction, but it stopped there, without going further, without broadening the context. Such lessons would have been perfectly in tune with the tactics of appealing to the United Nations, civil disobedience on the ground and defiance of power in diplomacy. So why are such classes absent from the Palestinian curriculum? Part of the explanation lies with the opposition of the donor states and Israel's punitive measures. But it is also due to iner inertia, laziness, flawed reasoning, misunderstanding, and the personal gains of some parts of society. In fact, the rationale for the existence of the Palestinian Authority engendered one basic rule in the last two decades, adaptation to the existing situation. Thus, a contradiction, contradiction and a clash have been created between the inner syntax of the Palestinian Authority and that of the Palestinian people.